Well, welcome to Knesset Gallery. Congratulations on a marvelous show. The show opens in a few minutes, but until then, tell us more about Movable Inc. What was your motivation and inspiration for creating this work? Um, so I started working on Movable Inc. Uh, paintings about a year ago. So everything is painted by one brush. So it's a calligraphy brush. Um, so I think the most important thing I want the viewer to get is the movement of the animal instead of the um, animal itself. We could also say it's the spirit of the animal. So I definitely don't want to create steel images. I want it to be more dynamic. And the other thing I was doing is um, I was under a lot of stress. So um, the painting kind of helped me to calm down. So as you can see, every painting is very expressive because I was trying to express my feelings. Um, and instead of painting from a photograph, some of it is painted with memories of my dogs. So everyone knows this is a dog year, so I wanted to do some dog paintings uh, for them. So I, I saw something that said part of your inspiration here was that this, this is the year of the dog in the Asian calendar. Did that, yes, did yes. that figure into you? Yes, it is the year of the dog, yeah. yeah. But as you can see, I also painted some cats. So I painted the dogs first, and then the cats, um, one black cat came into my yard for no reason. I was taking a walk and the cat just wanted to walk with me. So I actually talked to the cat. I said, are you trying to walk with me? And I actually took a walk with me. So every day it will come at the same time to take a walk with me. And then I just started using my cell phone to take pictures of it. And I thought, oh God, it looks like a painting. It's so beautiful. Let me paint the cat. His name is Tux. So it is a tuxedo cat. Mm -hmm. So the whole cat painting is because of tux. Are, are these pictures uh, the cat? Yes, yes. Those are all from my cell phone. So I snapped photo of tux. And then uh, he still comes in every day. So now he actually figured out how to knock on the screen door. If I don't answer the front door, he'll go to the backyard and he will try to meow at me in the back. <laughs> yeah. So. In the years of your career, have, has your style changed still? Yes, definitely. So I started learning Ling Nan style painting when I was five. My mom found me a really good uh, teacher. Her name is Xin Peng Jiu. She's fairly uh, well known in Taiwan, Hong Kong. Um, her teacher is one of the most famous Chinese painter, Zhao Xiaoang. I think if um, you're interested in Asian art, you will definitely recognize the name. So he has about, I believe, a hundred painting at Asian Art Museum here in San Francisco, permanently uh, collected by the museum. So Zhang Xiaoang already passed away. Uh, however, I feel like Ling Nan style hasn't changed after Zhao Xiaoang. Ling Nan style started in the 19th century. Um, However, Zhao Xiaoang really created his own style, being one of the Lingnan painter. But every painter started following his style, and everyone's style just looked like Zhao Xiaoang. So one thing I wanted to do, be, I have been learning his painting for a long time, so my style was really similar to his style too. However, um, I don't know when, but one day I thought to myself, in my life, I want to create my own style. It's like my own signature. I don't want to sign Zhao Xiaoang, I want to sign Anita Wong. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing right now. Uh, I finally found my own style. Um, I'm not very detail-oriented. I'm really inspired by Impressionist and um, Abstract Expressionist. So I feel like they are very expressive. I'm not very realist. I don't really, uh, I, I don't really have the patience to do realist work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, as you can see, everything is in black and white. Again, I don't have the patience to mix color. So I just thought, okay, let's do um, just one color. 
So, do you feel like you're, um, that this, I, I think you've answered this, but uh, did this work mesh as well with what you were doing, or is it a abrupt, so this drastic is, change? Uh, that's a good question. So, uh, this is my second show at Canasa Gallery. Uh, my first show, I feel like um, I loved my first show, however, it was still um, uh, very contained. It's not as expressive as this show. Uh, so the first show, I tried to do some uh, 3D Chinese paintings. Um, but this one, I feel, um, definitely represent me the most. Um, I would say this one is closer to my signature. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, do, does your art reflect a personal philosophy in some way? Um, in in any know, way? You know, I haven't thought about that, but thinking about it now, I. I think it does uh, in many ways mm. because I feel like, you know, first of all, I truly believe life is so short. You're going to have to follow your passion. And Canada can Gallery gave me the um, freedom to do what I want to do. I don't have to create art to sell. Um, I feel like Canada Gallery definitely support artists like me. Um, because I feel like if I create art that's aiming at just selling it, putting it in somebody's living room, then it's not really art. Um, life is so short. I have to, I have to focus on what I truly want to do. So this is what I truly want to do. I'm not quite there yet. By looking at the paintings now, there's some that I don't even like anymore. Uh, there's some that I'm still happy with, but when I look at some of them. I feel like I could um, keep on going and do it, better. It, it, I think it's more a, li a liberating way to go. You're not worried about matching somebody else's work. It's mm -hmm. what you want to do. Right. right. I think um, I definitely don't want to label myself um, because when artists label themselves, it limits your thinking. Say, for instance, um, it, you know, label. Labeling art is definitely important because um, you could keep it in a library. People could search for your work if you are under that category. However, for artists, we always should remember that we should sometimes take away the label. For instance, if I am doing impressionist Chinese art, I should somehow take away that label and think outside. Maybe I'm not doing it any impressionist. Maybe I should step outside the box and think of other potentials. Um, because when I, when I labeled um, my work as abstract expressionist, some people might say, okay, it's not abstract enough to my eye. Some people might say, okay, it's too abstract. It's really depending on that uh, person um, himself or herself. So um, you've touched on this, but tell us a little bit more about your creative background, where you, where you, where you learned and, and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so this one, I have to give thanks to my mom. Uh, she wanted to be an artist, and for her whole life, she always thought, I'm going to be an artist, but no one supported her. They're always saying, okay, artist, you're going to become poor artist. You can't really make a living. So she became a, a language teacher. She also taught Chinese history, but she always says to everyone around us, including our family, I want to be the artist. So she raised me to become the artist. So I studied when I was five with uh, the, the Chinese painter that I told you about earlier uh, for over 10 years. Um, and then afterwards, I went to Hong Kong Polytechnic University to study art and design. Um, and afterwards, my mom said, okay, if you want to be a great painter, you can't be trapped in China. You have to go outside of Hong Kong and China. Um, you have to go to the West. So she sent me to London. So I went to one of the most famous art schools, Central St. Martin, uh, London University, uh, to study graphic design. But during that time, I feel like, okay, I am doing something I like. However, it's always in front of a computer. And I just kind of 
when you're young, you just kind of follow the trend. So I, uh, after that program, I went uh, to Maryland and I started studying digital art. That was my first MA degree. Uh, my second MFA is in uh, digital photography, but I never even touched photography. I was more into video installation. So that's what I did at the beginning. It's all on a computer. But when I get home, I always have painted to feel, you know, like relaxation. Okay. So uh, after, the, after that, my school actually hired me as a professor. So I became electronic media and culture professor. And I moved to uh, Philadelphia and I was hired by AI, the Art Institute and Temple University to continue my teaching. So, so um, over there I taught video editing, special effects, graphic design, portfolio, everything related again to the digital world. Um, I'm not saying I'm not interested in that anymore, I, I still am, uh, but my true passion is definitely painting. Um, because it really relaxes me and I feel like I am good at what I do um, because I started at five. So these paintings, you can't really draft it out. There is no pencil involved. I, I craft out the painting on my mind and then I just go for it. So each painting took me about um, 10 minutes to half an hour to the most. Uh, if I make a mistake, I just throw the whole painting away. Because I can't really force myself to paint. Um, say, say for instance, if I say, okay, today I gotta produce a painting, that's never gonna work. I have to feel it first, yeah. um, and then I paint. Then it's a good painting. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. once again, congratulations on a, a really yeah. fine show, and I'm sure it will be a success. It already is a success because you've enjoyed doing it. So, thanks for being here tonight.